Well, let's move on uh, with a look through the international uh, newspapers of the day with Flo. Hi there. Okay. And uh, we're going to start off where we started with our French paper review, uh, how the newspapers are reporting on the operation to retake Mosul from the Islamic State group. That's right. It certainly is front page news around the world, here in France, abroad as well. Uh, let's start with the Wall Street Journal. You can see they're talking about how forces are digging in as the battle for Mosul unfolds. What you can see there is a photo of Kurdish security forces taking up position. The Wall Street Journal reports that U.S. special operations forces are also uh, fighting for the city. L'Orient Le Jour, uh, which is a Lebanese paper, also says that this uh, battle for Mosul is a key battle for the future of Iraq. And what you can see here is a photo of Iraqi uh, soldiers making their way to Mosul. And that same newspaper uh, actually picks up on the fact that, well, we're talking about one operation. There's more like two battles that are currently underway. That's right. Lorient Le Jour talks about the two battles for Mosul because, uh, as you can see in those two photos, on the one hand, you have Iraqi forces uh, advancing on Mosul from the south, and on the other, uh, you have Kurdish Peshmerga forces advancing on the east. Uh, now, they may have the same common enemy, but the stakes are very different, and the objectives are contradictory. Uh, yeah, according to L'Orient Le Jour, the whole religious mosaic of the region could change. And so while papers are very sure that there's going to be a victory in this battle, there's a lot of uncertainty as to what happens next. And several uh, Arabic language papers choosing uh, the format of cartoons to express what they think about all of this. That's right. You just got a sneak peek at one of those cartoons from Al Hayat that is a, a pan-Arab paper based in London. Lots of papers in the region are concerned about the plight of civilians that are caught in the crossfire. You can see here this cartoon, these crosshairs. Uh, and uh, right behind that Islamist militant, you can see that civilian calling for help. Almost uh, a shadow, really. Absolutely. And uh, if we take a look at another cartoon in Al Had, that's a Jordanian paper. What you can see here is uh, they're talking about this this battle for Mosul. Uh, and that tear there, inside the tear is written Mosul. Uh, now, NGOs are really sounding the alarm, saying there's a risk of a humanitarian disaster. Keep in mind, 1.5 million people live in the city, so there, there's quite a danger uh, that they could, uh, there could be a lot of destruction there. Uh, Al Quds, uh, which is another Pan-Arab paper based in London, they're focusing on a different angle, uh, which is what's going to happen to Islamic State militants after this battle. You can see them kind of breaking away from this combined uh, fighter into all sorts of different fighter, fighters running away. There's a concern that they could just disappear into nature. Even a warning today from the EU Security Commissioner that some of them who've travelled there from the EU might head back here and uh, cause more danger. Uh, we'll move on there with a different story that we've been talking about in our main news bulletin uh, and also in our French press review as well. Uh, this is the French Foreign Minister who's been uh, once again making his feelings known about the issue of these unaccompanied minors at the jungle, as it's known, that refugee camp up uh, near Calais. That's right. This is Interior Minister Bernard Cazeneuve. Now, he pens a piece in The Guardian today. Uh, now, he's talking about this deal that's been made between uh, the UK and France as to the fate of m some of these unaccompanied children, migrants, about up to two uh, excuse me, up to 300 youngsters could be reunited with their families in the UK. This is, is quite a, a drop compared to the, the numbers that are estimated uh, to be in the in the jungle right now. You can see uh, the, uh, the, the minister here saying, this is a good first step, but it's not going far enough. The UK must fulfill its moral duty to these unaccompanied children working alongside France. The, the minister says it's, much, it's the responsibility of both France and the UK. But if we take a look at the editorial in The Guardian, it quite agrees with uh, Bernard Gaznev. It says this must only be the beginning. Uh, and this article really lashes out against the Home Office for being too late, too slow, uh, and really not doing enough to help these unaccompanied migrants, uh, <clears throat> particularly minors. Uh, it's absurd to suggest that we could not absorb more than 300 children, says this editorial. Britain, after all, is the sixth biggest economy in the world. It would be uh, essentially mean and smug not to help these minors. And The Guardian uh, is known for its uh, more positive stance towards accepting migrants in the UK, broadsheet newspaper. If we look uh, at the tabloids as well, though, they're also picking up on this issue of uh, children coming across from Calais. And they have a bit of a different opinion. That's right. They're, uh, they have more misgivings, I guess you could say, mm. about whether or not the UK should allow these minors to come in. This is the front page of the Daily Star. Keep in mind, this is a tabloid. Yes. Uh, and you can see uh, they're... they're doubtful of the fact that these are actually minors. You can see they say the first Calais kids 
in, in parentheses, have arrived in the UK, uh, and they say that uh, they don't actually really look their age. So you can see not much trust in authorities here, uh, and it's likely that, you know, this is suggesting that maybe these migrants are going to get quite a cold reception when mm. they get back to the UK. A lot of people in the UK worried about this potentially being a bit of a sort of a sneaky back door of uh, illegal migration, all sorts of issues coming out of this. I'm sure we'll keep reporting on it for a while. Uh, let's move on to US politics. Uh, the Republican candidate, Donald Trump, who else, uh, drawing <laughs> criticism for saying that the US electoral system is rigged. That's right. He went on a Twitter rampage, as he tends to do. Let's take a look at just one of many tweets where he talks about this. You can see the election is absolutely being rigged by the dishonest and distorted media. Now, uh, lots of papers are saying this is not just another rant. This is actually quite dangerous. There are two editorials today that focus on this. First of all, the Washington Post takes it very seriously. Uh, you can see they're talking about how Trump poses an unprecedented threat to the peaceful transition of power. Essentially, if he loses, he'll came flawed. If he wins, he'll jail his opponent. That's what he once suggested he would do in a debate. The New York Times also is focusing on this, calling it uh, reckless rhetoric. And is, it lashes out against Republican authorities uh, for not rejecting this ridiculous notion that a national election can be rigged. Yes, it's not something that we ever really hear about in the United States, is it? Thanks so much, uh, Florence Villeneuve, talking us through some of the headlines in the international press.